Hi, my name is Michael Tanell. For those who are unfamiliar with who I am and what I do, I'm the co-founder of Tux Digital, a media production company from the United States. And we are most commonly known for our podcasts and videos focused on Linux and open source, uh, such as Destination Linux and This Week in Linux podcast, which is a news podcast. But we also provide media production services, consulting, and a lot more. Link in the show notes. So um, I've also been a Linux and open source enthusiast for over 20 years. And at the same time, I've been a marketing person for over 20 years. I don't typically lead with that for re reasons you might already assume, but that's what's relevant for this talk. Uh, I love open source for a lot of reasons. Most of you already know them, like the philosophy behind it, the benefits for the code and all of that. But on average, marketing isn't part of the list of reasons, and usually it's non-existent. So uh, marketing in open source has a variety of issues, like for example, confusing messaging, terrible branding, many examples of that. Sometimes it's just as simple as developers not telling anyone about the stuff they're making. So no one can use it if they don't know it exists. But I'm the host of a new show called This Week in Linux, and we released episode 240 today. And out of the 240 episodes, how many times do you think I have been contacted to cover something on the show by anyone, a developer, whoever? So let's go like a quick vote, um, over 100. No one, okay. Over 50, okay. Uh, between 25 and 50, uh, less than, uh, fewer than 20. That is correct, it's about 12. <laughs> yeah. And most of the time it's from people who are not the developers, just fans of something wanting me to look at something. So the reason I bring that up is because it's a, a good opportunity to contact people like that and let people spread the news for you but a lot of the times developers don't do that. So in this talk, I'm gonna show you things that you can do in addition to that and a lot of other ways to get more attention to the product or the software that you're making. And the reason I bring this up is because it's as simple as sending an email, a tweet, joining our Discord server at tuxedo.com slash Discord and just sending me a message. Uh, that's a self shameless plug, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of benefits and easy ways to do it, but a lot of people don't take the opportunity. Now, there's a saying in basketball that you miss every shot you don't take. I don't really like that thing because it, what it's trying to say is what I prefer to a better way is that if you don't ask the question, the answer is always no. So if you want to get a yes, or at least a maybe, you got to ask them. So people are coming in with really zero context with what you're trying to convince them to use or maybe even just be interested in. And also that's not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that they're probably and most likely actively seeking a reason and just one reason to leave and disengage with whatever it is. So you need to make sure that your presentation is as best as you can. But I'm going to tell you a quick story. As a teenager, I had a lot of hobbies geeky stuff like comic books and sci-fi and writing code to traditional hobbies like basketball and art, like making videos and drawing. When I was 13 or 14, I knew I wanted to work in tech in some way. I had no idea what that way would be, but I knew it was going to be tech in something. Now, I dabbled around to find my thing and landed on software and website development because it combines some of my hobbies like writing code and basketball. I mean, art writing code and art. So with websites, I could write code to make the site function, but also use my interest in art to design and make the sites look good and just be very appealing. So this is why I found my thing and then started making websites on GeoCities and Angel Fire. So <laughs> I, I made some cool stuff, um, even started getting into programming at this time because of all of this. And you know, not to just do informational slides, but to make stuff that does some kind of function. And I would share my stuff with my geeky friends and we would geek out on like the programming and the functionality of everything. And it was all fun. I loved it. But then I started to show people who aren't tech savvy or geeky in any way, like family and teachers and that sort of stuff. And their reactions were different. So they changed my outlook and my perspective of what I wanted to do without knowing it at all. 
And so what happened is that they seemed very disinterested, very disinterested in the programming side of it. They never commented about programming, didn't even care at all, but they would always comment about how it looked and how it felt and the experience of it and something like that. So it taught me something very valuable. I mean, in fact, it's, if you think about it, when I, when I think back, I remember the glazed over expressions from everyone I was trying to explain. Even when I was like, oh, here's how the code works, they would still, I don't care. So, but the thing I learned from this is because it, it got me thinking about, should I focus on the visual side? I and mean, is that more important? The answer to that question is no. It's equally important, but it's not more important. So it, it, there, it got me answer, thinking about the reasons and the philosophy behind why they had this perspective. And it's because it was a fascinating subject to me. Like, why would all these other kinds of people with different backgrounds not care about this at all? And why would they care about this specifically? So in this, I found another hobby, mixed martial arts. So, okay, marketing. I found marketing. Um, so, so the thing I learned very valuable was presentation is everything. Even if something is the most amazing piece of code, the most amazing software you've ever seen, and it looks terrible, people will still be turned off by it. So you want to put as much effort as you do in the code into the visuals even if that means just getting like bootstrap or something that helps you do it, just put something in or bring in someone who can help you with visuals and that sort of thing. So um, presentation is everything, but it's only thing for most people. If you're tech savvy, then you have the combination of maybe caring about both, but the regular mainstream people just only care about how it looks and how it feels. That's why there's so many applications that are so popular I'm not going to name any right now, but after the talk, feel free to ask me and I will tell you for sure. There's a lot of them that function okay, but look good so people use it. And then businesses spend millions of dollars on the stuff that's okay. Um, and it's just because that's where the marketing went into. So every project and well, everyone who makes anything, for example, software, the programming side is important, but design is equally important and shouldn't be ignored because not everyone under understands the programming side, like I said. So let's talk about how to do marketing in a efficient way, but also an open source way, right? Now, some of these things that you're going to be using are not open source. That's just how it is. Uh, but first of all, the best thing to do is have your presentation on your website, even if it's a GitHub page at least make a GitHub page that's a regular page, not just the GitHub repo. Make something that you, and also, if you make something that is better served with a screenshot or a video or make it, the amount of GitHub projects that don't even have the a screenshot to explain what it is, or and even I've seen themes in GitHub repos with no screenshots. Like, what? Okay. So it's important to have your, your presentation on every facet as best as you can. But a lot of people will go into the social media side and wonder what's the best platform. And I get this question all the time. What's the best platform to use in social media? And I'm sorry to say all of them. If you've, if you, if you've heard of it, use it. Because it doesn't matter which platform is the best. It matters where the people you want to see your stuff are using, like where they are. If they're on Facebook, be on Facebook. Even if that means you have to be on Facebook. So it's important to do that sort of thing. And there's, I know TikTok is a thing you don't wanna do, I get it. But people are on TikTok. So just get out there and dance, it'll be great. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the next thing is blogs, newsletters, and that sort of stuff, like mailing lists or whatever. You can make your own blog to tell people about the stuff and your, uh, your, the things that you're trying to get them to see, but you don't have to do that. 
You can just have a GitHub page that looks nice or a regular page that looks nice and then contact blogs like OMG Ubuntu or Pharonix or 9to5Linux or LWN or whatever else. Like there's, there's so many of them. You can contact them and then ask them to cover your project. And if you ask all of them, you'll probably get at least one yes. Because that's the, the, the main thing. The best thing you can learn about sales and marketing is you're going to get 100 no's when you get, before you get the one, the one yes. And that's okay. Most people are averse to doing this because they don't want to hear no. And the best salesperson, the best marketer, that's the most common word they hear in their life. So it's important to take that in consideration. It knows not as big a deal as it might seem. I've heard it a million times and I continue because of insanity. So, uh, so the, the next thing is good documentation. Documentation is in itself good to have, but also you want to make sure that people can easily understand what you're wanting to do. And the biggest issue is that most people don't have documentation at all because it is a, a thankless effort. And most people just look, they expect it, but because they expect it, that's why you should have it. And the next one is podcasting. You don't need to make a podcast. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. You can just contact people and be a guest on their podcast. By the way, I have podcasts and uh, Destination Linux and This Week in Linux. So uh, feel free to contact us, uh, com slash discord. And there's... So you can get interviews on them. You can just also submit segments and demos and things like that. There's going to be a wide variety of value that you can offer in that sense. And they will appreciate it because you're offering them a very valuable thing too. And it might not seem that way, but it is content that they don't have to do anything for. That is wonderful. So the next thing is YouTube videos. Now you could also contact a YouTuber and have them talk about it too, but I mean, make videos yourself, but specifically for tutorials or demos or things like that to help people get used to something. Because the, the worst thing about the open source community in terms of marketing is that they're not putting the effort in to explain what it is most of the time. So we, we go around the, like the ecosystem wondering why, why are people using these bad programs and not these fantastic things that I've made and something like that? And it's because most of the time they don't know it exists. And when they do know it exists, they give it maybe 20 seconds of a look and then the, the GitHub project is confusing and they don't, I've, I've felt that myself as someone who is very tech savvy, no, uh, savvy, that's not a word, very tech savvy. Uh, yeah, thank you. And I've, Spent, I, I know that the marketing issue exists and I've looked at it for myself and I still sometimes catch myself just not caring and just closing the tab. So it's something that people need to put more effort into. And I hope this talk helps. Uh, but another thing you can do is attend events like this, but also webinars and that sort of thing. And then there's two things that I'm sure you're going to appreciate and then one you're going to hate. but so the, the most valuable piece of how to do this is automation. You can automate most of marketing because it's not a very complicated task. It's just a tedious task that has millions of things you have to do, but automation is a wonderful thing you can apply. So you can use a service like make.com, which is like a, a, pro, a premium pro, a proprietary service that basically you just do, you know, plug and play, drag and drop, click stuff. Um, and there's also one called N8N, and it's, or the N, the number eight, the letter N. And it's uh, basically the same kind of thing, except it's an open source self-hosted version kind of of uh, make.com. You could also check out uh, Zapier, Zapier, not sure how you say that exactly, but that's the most commonly used compar like comparison. Um, but in my opinion, the other options are a much better choice because even make.com is much more reasonably priced. Uh, Zapier is, uh, they are a fantastic example of marketing is everything. And even if your price is four times more, people know about your product and they use it. So I didn't even plan to talk about that, but that's a fantastic example. So uh, automation is something you can do for social media. 
You can make it where every time you post something on your blog, it automatically posts a tweet or or an X. What is it? Whatever. <laughs> you can automatically make it <laughs> post a, a Mastodon thing or you can have it do anything and you can have them do it all at once and in a sequence or however you want to do it. You, there's so many ways you can make it work for you. And it, in some ways, you might be able to automate videos, but I really wouldn't suggest that because then you'd have the AI stuff and it'll probably say something wrong every other second so maybe not that part but you can automate pretty much everything else if it doesn't revolve uh, involve creating content you can use it to make whatever and then the next thing is analytics analytics is something that a lot of people in the the software world appreciate but also they hate the idea of collecting data because they don't want to be the person who's doing telemetry right but it's important to do it at least to some degree, but you can do it ethically. There's many ways to do it. Now, for example, Google Analytics is not one of those, but <laughs> you can use that if you want to, and a lot of people do, and it is easy, and it does get a lot of data, so it, there is that. But there's also one called Matomo, which is basically a competitor to Google Analytics, and it's an open source project, and you can just set it up. And you can also control how ethical it is. If you don't want it to even know what country someone is from, you can limit the range of IP address that it, it pulls in and all sorts of stuff. So it's a, it's a good way to do it. And analytics is something important because if you don't know what people think of your stuff or what they're using, then you don't really know how to adjust for what people like because you have no idea what they like. And it also applies to collect analytics is not just collecting data that way. It's also doing like so feedback forms and requesting people to give you comments and they're, and they will. And a lot of those comments will be why it's broken, but there will also be some stuff that is in addition to that appreciation of the work. And also maybe they could tell you like, here's a experience I had and here's how I would think it would be fixed. You know, there's a lot of different ways to get the feedback and there's, there's so much more, and I think I have n uh, nine minutes left or, or four minutes left. So there's not much time to do Q&As. In the description of this talk, it said there's an ample time for Q&As. I thought I had a, an hour talk, and then I saw it was 25 minutes. So it's a little bit different. But I do have a solution because I, I took into consideration that there might be questions. Uh, there's going to be a talk or a workshop later today. Uh, run by Ryan Gorley, uh, Free Hive. It's a marketing workshop, and it just is like just a perfect combination of the first 10, 15 minutes of that workshop. I will be doing Q and A's and that sort of thing. So if you do have a question, feel free to join us in the workshop. Um, so thanks everyone for coming. I'm very honored for everyone to be here. And uh, if you have any questions, again, you can check out the workshop, and or maybe we could take one or two right now. Okay. So go ahead. This, not go ahead, wait for the microphone. That's a good point. <laughs> um, I was wondering when it comes to uh, the analytics of your podcast, mm -hmm. do you have any idea of what the breakdown of the specific public is? Yes, uh, we have analytics of, well, you can only break it down so much because different podcast apps and different platforms have different ways of collecting the information. So the way we do it is, as I think as far as you can go, is maybe country. So we do have demographics of country based on IPs and stuff like that. And that's as far as it goes in terms of like specifics. But it also takes into consideration a variety of things. Um, it even has gender information and stuff like that. But it's based on randomness of uh, which platform you're using. So Apple Podcasts can pull that information in because they have in, in details about who the person is and their you know, Apple ID and that sort of thing. And then other platforms have absolutely zero information about it. So it's a very skewed data. Uh, but so as far, if you want to go super detailed into that particular thing, it's much harder because uh, downloads on a, on a podcast is just an MP3 and then that's it. So depending on the platform, you maybe have you have some information, but it's probably about 10% accurate. And then YouTube, on the other hand, is actually much more accurate in that sort of stuff. So it, it's you you can go down to like the source of where it comes from, like the refer, the the gender, the 
uh, the country, the, all sorts of stuff. So uh, I don't like Google most of the time and most of their things and, and YouTube and it has some issues, but that part's nice. I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, feel free to reiterate afterwards <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I didn't. Hey, so uh, the question I have is when you market your open source project, for example, we in our project, we made the experience that we are quite successful at marketing towards other open source using people, other nerds, if you will. Mm -hmm. How do you reach a wider audience if you think your project could be beneficial to them? How do you break out of this nerd mold? <laughs> It's a good question. Uh, first of all, what's the name of the project? Types. Types. What's it, what's it do? Uh, it's a LaTeX replacement. It's does uh, you can write uh, scientific papers and technical documents faster using types. Okay, cool. So uh, that's one way to do it. You've now done on the video, and anybody here now knows about it. So, <laughs> so, but there's there's every way you can do it is if you if you're trying to focus on people who are a particular type of uh, language and they might not know about something. You could go to like a Reddit forum for that, or you could go to a, a regular forum. You could go to people talking about it in, in communities, maybe a Discord server about a topic. There's many ways to go about it, but the, I think my, the best way is to do a social media effort of finding people talking about it themselves on their accounts and just do like a search. And you can do an automation system with this where it will automatically ping you anytime someone mentions the thing you want to be notified about. And then you could con you can reply to them directly on their social media. And in doing so, you will actually blow their minds that someone paid attention to what they said on social media, because, you know, as it's, it's mostly a giant web of noise. Uh, so this, it's a very good tactic because it's not only just a good marketing sense of getting your information out there. It's also a good way to show that you are listening and they, and by doing so, they will appreciate it more and, are, and also more likely to check out your stuff. I think that's it time. Yep. All right. So if you have any more questions, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>